Okay, not a lot of big important things happen in the episode, but nonetheless, I got a lot to say. First of all, Enterprise. Freaking Enterprise. You know what I love about character? I love a lot of things about characters and shows and movies and books. But when you have a character where you're like, don't really care about in the beginning because they don't seem anything appealing to them, but as time goes on, you start to grow on that character. It feels like a real life situation. You know, it's like you just meet someone for the very first time, you're not sure about them, they seem awkward. But as time goes on, you start like, you know what? I like you, and I'm, I'm glad I met you at the end of the day. And that's exactly how I feel with Enterprise. She became this character who's completely struck in by war and battle and not caring for herself to now she's slowly understanding to communicate with others, to eat proper food and to, you know, think about other things besides battle all the time. She's growing into da -da -da, a freaking human. We're trying to get some serious near automata kind of stuff right here, man. <laughs> Where what is between first between a human and and a ship. <laughs> it's weird, but nonetheless, I like it a lot. You know, she's even having Belfast sit down with her to eat breakfast. She's on her eating her energy bars, her rations, and she's enjoying herself walking, having different kind of thoughts, even cracking jokes. She's cracking jokes. She's slowly becoming a human, and Belfast is really enjoying the development. Everyone is enjoying the, the development. Cleveland, some other maids. They're like, wow, she's actually becoming something. But of course, of all good things, it will come to her in the end. Something could happen if the show decides to go that way where something bad will happen. Someone dear to her and it could harm her. But I believe that's part of the experience. So imagine this. If Enterprise stayed the way she was and someone next to her died, she'll feel upset, but not that upset. It's like, you kill a comrade. I'm upset with you. In a story. However, when someone next to her the enterprise she is now, if someone asked her died, it will hurt her extremely a lot. She'll feel so much pain and remorse and agony about it, and she'll like, what's the point of having this experience? If, if this, this is going to lead to the end, what's the point? Simple. Because you were able to feel that sad for them. The fact you were feeling that sad for them, meaning you truly loved them. Meaning you were more of a human than you thought. Beautiful storytelling, you ask me. If they go that direction, we'll see. Well, anyways, on other important matters, the Black Cube that everyone's talking about, the one that Akagi is doing, some very suspicious stuff, even saving the Sakura Empire, according to the Royal Navy, that could be happening. Well, anyways, she touched the cube and she kind of saw a siren version of herself. Holy snap, are we getting into some Katon Kali kind of stuff where the ship and um, Kanai collection, when they die, they become abyssals and stuff? Uh, are we getting into that kind of territory? That would be pretty cool. You know, a never ending war of life and death where no matter what you do, you're going to keep fighting one way or another. You're not going to really rest. That would be very interesting. They do that. Because k Hunt Collection kind of added it on at the end, at the movie, and I would like to see them more, experience more into that, not just the movie, but an entire season to explore more with the abyssals. So we'll see what they do with the sirens here. So they're using siren technology that's connected to the Orochi, a ship that Kagi's using, and Kagi's up to some very fishy stuff. And her true goal we saw at the end for Ag Amagi. So the sister she has now, I don't know if she really cared for her that much. Because even the the girl from the Iron Blood fleet was saying it must hurt to have a one-sided love. So I'm guessing Akagi doesn't care for her that much, but she's just a, more of a stand-in, a replacement for her actual sister. Who knows? Well, anyway, speaking of that, Sakura and Paradise, like I said before, aren't that much of bad people. Like some countries in the day, the people there just want to live in peace as well. In the day, most of us want to live in peace. It's mostly the higher up, the heads, the ones that get corrupted. Even if their intentions are good, always are paved in bad blood. And it's because of that, it causes war. A lot and lots of war. And what's happening right now is that, as you can see how Kaki was even training the little girls, you know, the little girls that are running in the candy and stuff, and how nice she was to them. How, it was, wouldn't it be nice if they could stay together forever? That was her saying. Meaning, even though she is one of the main antagonists of the series, 
she's not pure, Mwah, I'm a villain, I just want to do evil stuff. She has a goal in mind and probably filled with good intentions for the sake of not just for herself, but also for her empire. But because of that, it inflicts with other people's safety. They have to retaliate. So once again, this isn't a black and white kind of war. It's completely gray, and I love it like that, you know? So I'm glad that this show is doing stuff like that and not just playing out. They could have done that, but they didn't, which I'm glad they did. Now, with Javelin, Lappy, and Ayanami, I'm... I know you make up your decision already. She's more conflicted with her, I guess, because she's younger, I guess. But it's like, you're going to make up your mind already. Do you want to be friends with them or do you not? Heck, one of the Sakura Empire fleets are already on their side in a way. You know, the one that caught what was going on and now she's over there. She even had a hard time switching sides. <laughs> I guess she's more simple-minded. The simple-minded people, they don't. You know, they're easy to make up their mind compared to those who think a lot, you know, because they're conflicted with their own feelings. They try and find the most logical reasoning until their feelings get in their way, and then now they don't know what to do. That happens a lot, especially with me, man. I'm more of a logical person, but when something that comes directly towards my heart is involved, I'm like, hmm, I can't decide. So, I guess I understand it. It's just that it was really prolonging. Hopefully, it don't last to the entire series, because I like to see them do more teamwork. Hopefully, not to the end. I like to see them do that. So, the rest of the episode was just them, you know, chillaxing, you know? Just eating lunch, hanging out with each other, talking about panties on sale. <laughs> and speaking of etchiness, Azure Lane is known for its lewdness, its etchiness. Oh, glory, praise thee, Japan. True men's of culture. So, you could tell when I look at the comic section on different sites when watching this. I wouldn't watch it on all different sites. I would just watch it on one site. But, I will read different comments on every different um, sites. Boy, were they pissed. <laughs> they were so pissed. I was in a way mad. Like... Even when they were just showing panties and some of the things, they weren't completely naked. Like, some were showing butts, some were showing panties. Like, are you kidding me? That amount of censorship, people were mad. Like, why? That is overboard. It is sad that we, the American people, the true land of freedom, of expression and entertainment, all that stuff, we are becoming more censorized than Japan. Japan is becoming more like America than we are becoming like ourselves. If a kid can watch a kid's show with matchiness on it, and their parents are like, eh, who cares? But yet, we, as grown as men, <laughs> can't do that. We can't do that. Because, for some reason, people in the industry who were, their only job was just to transport the product from there to here for us to enjoy in good quality, that was their only job. Was not Their job was not meant to, to police the content. Their job was not meant to censor it. Their job was just meant to bring it over here. I don't know if Japan censored it or not. I don't know. It's just that I watch Strike Witches. I watch Girls and Panthers. And Girls and Panthers wasn't that edgy, but that amount of censoring ship was crazy. Super, super freaking crazy. Like, goddamn. <laughs> like, people are just storming for, like, curse you Funimation and stuff. Like, and, and you know already, Funimation doesn't like this kind of content. You had people from that side, even country over there, complain about this kind of content, how they can't stand it. So my question is, is why do you take it? Why not give it to someone else? Why not give it to Dubcast or Hulu or give it to Netflix, or even give it to fucking Viz Media, um, Aniplex, somebody who actually will take this product and use it with care, and not put and not police the content. You know, that's the problem I do have with this. Is like, because you know, Funimation is doing it; they're bringing out the dubs like very well. But I ain't supporting them. I'm just pirating the shit. But nonetheless. If you don't like it, why are you barring? It's the same thing you did with Shield Hero. Same thing you did with Goblin Slayer. You know? You complain about this content, but you're bringing it towards us anyways. But you want to censor it so badly. And I think that's the problem with our industry. Is that people were very sensitive, t took over, gone top spots. 
And now they believe that they know what's right for everybody, even grown-ass people. It's ridiculous. Look, it's like with video games. If you see a rated M sign on a game, you should not be policing me. You should not be parenting me. I am a grown-ass person. If I, if I buy a game at a store rated M and it has nudity and all other stuff, etchiness, if I buy that game, I should do whatever the heck I want with it. And I should not have to go through you and tell you telling me what I cannot enjoy. Okay? You do you and I do me. If you don't like it, you don't mess with it. But don't ruin the fun for other people, is all I'm saying. Anyways, I nonetheless, I did enjoy that episode. <laughs> it just triggered a lot of people. And probably myself is because it's sad that our own entertainment is being policed. It's like, these people really are having those those thoughts, those communist thoughts. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyways, I enjoyed the episode. I'm glad to see Enterprise growing. I'm seeing Javelin finally having her determination and resolve to get Ayanami as her friend no matter what and seeing what will happen next. Everything is stirring in nice little plots of stew, and I can't wait to see the outcome of it. So that's all I got for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> The fuck? And also hit the bell icon if that works. Anyways, Mad Crown Anime, signing out. You know, I should really get a crown one day. Hold on to that thought. Hold on to that thought.